and I'm Benjamin Price, and today I'll be talking with Ryan Johnson, writer and director of Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. <laughs> How are you doing today? Welcome I'm to the festival. Great, Benjamin. Thanks for, thanks for sitting down and talk. Um, so where did this movie first start brewing for you? And I'm curious, was it always Benoit Blanc, Cetric, and how did COVID-19 sort of change the path that the story ended up taking? So a, a few years ago, I did the first movie, which is called Knives Out, and that was kind of the start of thinking it'd be really fun to do a whodunit. And I grew up reading Agatha Christie's books. I grew up watching the movies based on her books. I love the genre so much. And so the idea of doing my own version of that just seemed like so much fun. And so coming up with the character of Benoit Blanc in that first movie was kind of where it all started. And Daniel, Craig, and I had so much fun making that first movie. Mm -hmm. it, was, it felt like having a party, like just being on that set. We were just having a blast. And so we just kept saying, if we can make more of these, you know, and, and if we can make them interesting each time and make them feel different every time so that we don't get bored and hopefully the audience doesn't get bored, um, we'll keep doing that. So, yeah. so sitting down to write this one, that was it. It was just kind of, okay, it's going to be Daniel as the detective, as Benoit Blanc. The Poirot. Whole new, yeah, whole new cast of characters, whole new setting, whole new mystery, like like a whole new mystery novel. It's like opening up a whole new book. And yeah, that was kind of where it started. And I wrote this movie during um, 2020. So I wrote it right when the first lockdown was happening and we were all alone in our homes. Um, and another big part of these movies is they're whodunits, but instead of being in England in the past, they're in America modern right. day right now yeah. and so it would have felt weird to have this huge <laughs> thing yeah. that we all went through and not acknowledge that, that it happened hopefully we hit it with a very light touch because it's obviously a very serious thing that happened yeah. and these are not very serious movies but it, it would have felt strange for it not to be not to be a part of it you know well and um i just this is a question more for me to be honest what what do you what else was Benoit Blanc up to prior to when we see him in lockdown in Glass Onion? Because the way in which he's introduced is quite delightful. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, we kind of find him in the middle of lockdown, losing his mind a little bit. I mean, I think prior to that, I love one of the things I love, and this is something that's in a lot of detective fiction that I love. Every time the detective is introduced, he makes some reference, or somebody makes a re oh my god, you're the one who solved. The murder of that ballerina. Oh, you're the one who solved that that murder with the skyscraper. Yeah. You're the, you know, and and so the notion that he's just had this endless amount of incredibly glamorous, cool cases, and we just get to hear about a few of them. To me, that's 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 really really fun. I like to think he's keeping busy. You know. Well, and you spent a lot of time with this character the past few years. I'm curious. How how deep does your mental file go? And also, when you're writing his dialogue, do you keep how intentionally vague do you keep his past? Because we realize like we don't know all that much about him. You know, <laughs> we haven't been to the Blanc family reunion. Yeah. We don't know where he went to school. I'm keeping. I mean, I, I I've got in my head kind of a growing thing of who he is. But yeah. I feel like with these movies, and this is something again, it goes back to the detective movies that I that I or detective books that I love. Like with Poirot, the reality is you don't really know that much about him. You get yeah. little glimpses, you get like his personal habits, you see how he lives, but you don't dive into a deep backstory of him. I actually think that's really important. To mm -hmm. me, what's important, even when you have somebody as magnetic as Daniel Craig, as big a movie star and as good an actor as Daniel Craig, to remember these movies are about the mystery. Yeah. And so his role in it is not to dive into the, de the depths of who is... Benoit Blanc, it's for him to play his role as the detective in the mystery um, and for that to kind of take center stage. So I think it's fun seeing little glimpses of it yeah. and hopefully we'll get to keep doing that and build up a bigger <laughs> picture of him. But uh, but yeah, it's it's all got to be about finding out who done it. Yeah. And speaking of the who done it, how much of the mystery do you choose to divulge to a cast member when you're pitching it to them? And at what point like even in filming, do you you know unveil not to, not to tiptoe into spoilers or anything? Yeah, yeah, but do yeah. you unveil the true? Well, by the time I go out to cast, I have the script written. Yeah. So I just give them the script, okay. and I don't I don't I don't play coy with anybody. I feel like these are all such good actors. Yeah. They're going to do their best work if they have all the information and can calibrate their performance to that. Yeah. So everybody knows everything going into it. There's there's all the spoilers are out there. Yeah. But um but the way I want them to experience it is not by me kind 
and telling them about it. I want them to read the script. And that first read of the script where they can have hopefully kind of the experience an audience has watching the movie for a first time, mm -hmm. I want them to experience that so they know kind of what we're going for at the end of the day, you know? Well, and speaking about those pre-production, going off of those pre-production phases, I know that you are, you've strayed away from table reads in your work. What do you, what do you sort of do in the place of that to know that like your cast members are locked in yeah. to these like hyper-specific personalities? That is a really, really good question. Yeah, I, I, I did one table read, like when I made my first movie, Brick, and had such a terrible time doing it. I haven't done one since. And um, I just, I, it's weird. So a table read, for anyone who's watching who doesn't know, is when it's before you shoot the movie, you get the whole cast around a table with the scripts, and you do a live reading of the script, basically. Um, I find it very unuseful and very frustrating because it's the first time everyone's hearing the movie and I can't direct it at all. Yes. <laughs> I can't control it at all. <laughs> and so, uh, so what I prefer is for everyone to read the script and then we just get together and we talk about it. Yeah. You know? And so we'll get together as a big group. We'll get together in little groups. We'll maybe read through a couple scenes here and there. Um, I feel like with this, we kind of had the advantage of uh, the actors coming into it had seen the first movie. So they kind kind of knew the tonal, even though this is slightly different than yeah. the first one tonally, it's a little broader, but they kind of knew what we were aiming for, and so we kind of just show up on set and start playing with it, and it, it, I don't know what the combination of factors is, but it feels like it all kind of clicks in pretty quickly in terms of everyone getting what the game is, you know? Well, and there's no shock when James Bond walks onto the set talking like Foghorn Leghorn. Yeah, everyone's not, yeah, everyone knows <laughs> what's nobody, happening, thank God. Because that phrase is so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and can you talk, uh, I need to know about the mural in Miles's, <laughs> behind Miles' dinner table. You alluded to it in an interview. I was just, every time it came Glad up watching it yesterday, it. I just, I, try, I was like squinting. Trying to see what's going on. I there. like the fact that uh, yeah, there's a mural. I, I guess I won't spoil what it is, but there's a big mural in in Miles's uh, behind Miles's dining table. Played by Edward Norton. Yeah, but played by Edward Norton. Edward Norton. And uh, if you recognize who's in the mural, I like to think that that person gave it to him as a gift. Okay. I think that makes a that lot makes of sense. That makes it a lot it better. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and, it, and it tracks that he'd be running with that crowd. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'm getting the call to wrap up, so I'm just oh, gonna fire oh. off a couple more. Oh, no, we're good. No? We got three minutes. No, Keep we're going. good. We're Keep good. Going. Sorry, I'm apologize. We're not, let's um, keep the party going. Can you talk about Benoit Blanc's food-based philosophy? We had we had the donuts in the first one. Now the onion is in the title. <laughs> it's like he's writing these now. I think that where did he, that come from? Well, I think he he likes his overwrought metaphors. Yeah. That's one of the things I kind of slowly grabbed onto with him is. He likes to hear himself talk, obviously, and he likes a good metaphor that he can beat to death. And so I don't know if it'll always be food-based, yeah. uh, but uh, the, the, one of the early things with this mystery was the idea that it seems densely layered, but the center is in plain yeah. sight. And so having him grab onto that and love kind of that metaphor, that to me is kind of the thing that's probably going to keep going. Yeah. I, I don't know if it'll always be food. Uh, the next one will be called... Yeah, I don't know. The, 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 no hot, dog, the hot dog killings <laughs> or something. I don't know, yeah. Um, and also, so this is your fourth collaboration with Bob Doucet, who's yeah. also here at the festival. You also worked with Noah Segan again. Yeah. There's some other collaborators in here I don't want to give away. Yeah. The Bombs, specifically. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm curious, what are the similarities between like going back into the editing booth with Bob for the fourth time and, say, working with Noah for the sixth time? Like, what the... The similarities between working with a freaking collaborator behind the camera and working with a freaking collaborator in front of it. Well, it's it's. I mean, the one thing that's the same about it is um, that it's somebody that I'm I'm friends with, and yeah. I guess I guess for me, I, and there, I have a lot of, like my cinematographer Steve Yedlin. I've been best friends with since I was 18. And your cousin? Um, no, so my cousin. Yeah, my cousin Nathan. Yeah, yeah. man, you've done your research, man. It's good. Thank you. I try. Yeah, uh, my cousin Nathan is my composer. We've been making movies together since we were 10 years old. Yeah. You know, so um, and for me, I mean, I kind of I learned how to make movies really by growing up making them with my friends as a kid you know that was I, really that's I think how you learn how to make movies is just getting a camera in your hand and just for fun making a ton of movies yeah. um, and for me it was always making them with friends on weekends it's how we kind of like just wasted time you know um, and having that still feel the same today having friend, a group of friends that when you get together and you go to work you really just kind of 
having fun making the movie together, you know, whether that's Noah in front of the camera um, or someone like Bob or Steve or my producer, Ron Bergman behind yeah. it, you know, it's, it's people that you have a long standing relationship with. And so it just feels like, and the gang together on a weekend, we're hanging out. What are we going to do? Let's make a movie. It yeah. was so fun to see who Noah plays in this. Uh, I have to go, say, I wonder if people who don't know him will recognize yeah. him. Cause I, I it don't took think me they a will. while to catch on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It wasn't immediate. <laughs> um, and so talking about casts, you've been fortunate in on, uh, assembling pretty outstanding ensembles two times in a row now. Who's someone, yeah, who's someone you want to work with uh, that you haven't yet that you want to see in the next Benoit Blanc mystery, the hot dog murders or whatever <laughs> we're calling it? You heard it here first. <laughs> Exclusive. Uh, well, that's, that's one of the things about doing this series that's another reason why i'll be really excited if we could keep doing this because I, I love actors there are so many that i just am dying to work with yeah. and the fact that in every one of these we're going to have a whole new cast and it's going to be an opportunity to assemble like a new group and to have that experience with them um it's just kind of like for me it's it's like halloween candy it's yeah. just like it's a joy so i i don't know i don't even know if i could name a single person that and i i feel like i would jinx it if i said a name because then i would have <laughs> never working with them but um but i i there are so many great actors out there that i would love to collaborate with and so um the notion of of keeping doing these movies means i'll have a better shot at that you know and lastly uh unlike benoit blanc are you any good at clue I'm t- I, that, it's funny I played it recently <laughs> and I remember loving it as a kid I, yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's you know it's it is just kind of a you just have to grind through it and go to all the rooms and collect all the things it's kind of like oh yeah this is what Clue is yeah. like I love the movie Clue and I, I love the aesthetics of the game I guess but uh, I'm pretty bad at it you just I do, have to go down the list you gotta yeah. go down the list man it's just grinding it out um, but I guess that's what we do in the movie too yeah. so. but um, I do love crossword puzzles I, that's my version of playing like a mystery game I, I do the crossword puzzle every day so I am I am pretty good at that so yeah. that's one thing that Blanc and I share I think well thank you very much for talking with me today this was a true pleasure man thank uh, you Glass Onion is in theaters November 23rd and it is on Netflix December 23rd this is Benjamin Price signing off see you next time bye